everybody, Ethan here. Welcome to Hello Road. So you may have noticed I'm not in Los Angeles. I'm actually in Salt Lake City. Can you guess why I'm here? If you guessed to buy another obscure car, you'd be right. It's actually 34 degrees here right now. I can see my breath. I'm not exactly used to this kind of thing. I lived in Southern California for too long. I may have just bought another obscure car. Well, here it is, a 1991 Geo Prism GSI. I'm curious, has anybody watching ever seen one of these before? I owned one way back when I was 19 and I've only seen maybe one or two since. You may have noticed that this car is pretty similar to the 88 Chevy Nova Twin Cam that I just bought. I'd say this vehicle is sort of the spiritual successor to that car. It's built in the same California factory, it's based on a Corolla, it's black with a red stripe, it's got the 4AG motor, 5-speed manual transmission, and there's a Chevy logo. Sort of. Okay, let's go drive this thing. So this is my first time driving a Geo Prism GSI in about 20 years. Let's see what kind of memories this thing will bring back. You're probably asking yourself, why travel all this way to buy a beat up old Geo? You may be wondering, has Ethan gone mad? Well, I suppose one has to be a little bit kooky to own eight cars, seven of which are old hoopties, mostly from the 80s and 90s. I'd refer to the Geo Prism GSI for me personally as the one that got away. To most people, the Prism is just a stupidly named version of the Toyota Corolla. But the GSI, especially in hatchback form, was a rare creature indeed. It's got upgraded suspension, it's got disc brakes, larger wheels, and of course the obligatory red stripe. I owned a Prism GSI back when I was 19. I only owned it for about a year. At the time, that Geo was the nicest vehicle that I had ever owned. As the end of summer drew near, I realized that I couldn't simultaneously afford college loans and a car payment. So I sold the car to my sister's soon-to-be ex-boyfriend, never to see it again. So even though this example is a little bit more rough around the edges, I'm really looking forward to experiencing a car that I absolutely loved when I was 19. Okay, so I have no idea where I am. I'm gonna see if I can find a highway on-ramp to uh, see what this thing's capable of. I don't really remember. Let's go find out. Okay, freeway on-ramp. Wow, 7,500 RPM red line. That's impressive. Okay, so what now? I'm hundreds of miles away from home, I've got two free days, and my Chariot is a weird car from the 1990s. Looks like we're headed on an obscure car road trip through Utah. This car runs pretty good, but it has 180,000 miles, and it's seen better days. So I think my first stop's gonna be to Walmart to pick up some supplies. That's not good. All right, that's interesting. Okay, so the battery's fine. I checked all the electrical connections. I really have no idea why this thing isn't starting. So here's where we're at. I'm over 700 miles away from home. I'm stuck in a Walmart parking lot in a city that I've never been to with a car that won't start. Awesome! I guess worst case, I could tow the thing home with a U-Haul, but that wouldn't really be a whole lot of fun. All right, so I walked around Walmart for a while, try to figure out what I'm gonna do. I don't know, let's just try starting it again. Woohoo! Maybe I should try it a couple more times just to make sure it's not a fluke. Yeah! One more time. That is so weird. I guess I just needed to sit for a while. I have, I have no idea. 
Okay then, well, let's get out of here. Unfortunately, I only have about an hour in Salt Lake City before I need to start heading south. And the seller suggested I go visit Gilgal Sculpture Garden here in Salt Lake. So let's go check it out. So we're entering the sculpture garden. Let's take a look and see what we can find. Gilgal started out as the backyard project of Thomas Child back in the 1940s, 50s, and early 60s. The twilight years of his life was spent here, constructing all sorts of strange, towering sculptures filled with biblical references carved into the rocks. There's a huge amount of mystery surrounding this place. Not many even knew about this hidden sculpture garden until somewhat recently. And even today, there are more questions than there are answers. The visuals here are unquestionably odd. Body parts scattered on a hill. A sphinx with the face of Mormon prophet Joseph Smith. A giant grasshopper paired with a severed head. Four giant granite books. And a life-size statue of Thomas Child himself, wearing an incredibly stylish pair of brick pants. Childs traveled throughout Utah looking for giant rocks for his creations. Many of these rocks were so heavy they needed to be lowered into his backyard by crane. About 15 years ago, a developer proposed raising these towering sculptures to build condos here, but a group of locals worked to save the site. All right, it's starting to get cold. I gotta go back to the car and put on a sweatshirt. I thought I could deal with these cold Utah temperatures, but I don't think I can. All right, Gilgal Gardens, see you later. All right, we're gonna see if the car starts again. Good news, it started. So it's getting late and I need to start my trek back to Los Angeles. I plan to visit a few unique locations on my journey back home. Stay tuned for my next video as I continue my travels through Utah in my old Geo. See you later. See you later.